What's up, people? So uh, I've got two videos here that were posted on my subreddit. And by the way, subreddit link below. These two videos are examples of one extraordinary claims. I obviously require extraordinary evidence. But two, these are examples for videos where people fail to look rationally at the conclusions they're making when the conclusion that they made is something they like, something that makes them feel good. In this case, something positive or something that makes their religion seem, seem good. Now, obviously, I, I'm all for respecting people's beliefs, but that shouldn't come at the compromise of rationality and reason. So let's get into the video. The first one we have is by this lady, Kirti History. We all know her really well over here on this channel. Uh, thanks to the amount of BS she says and let's watch this video. Women bleeding every month is unusual routine but imagine a goddess bleeds, like literally bleeds. That's what's been happening in the Chengal Mahadeva temple of Kerala. In this 1500 year old temple, Shiva and Parvati are the main deities and every time Parvati bleeds, a four day festival called Triputrata is being celebrated. Okay, okay. So far, uh, what we have seen or what we've heard about is this statue in a temple bleeds. Now, this violates several laws of physics like conservation of mass and all that stuff. But how is a statue bleeding? That's the first thing you should think about. Now, obviously, if the conclusion you're going to make from this is something that makes you feel good, you're not going to think about or look at the rational aspects or the critical thinking aspects of whatever conclusion you're going to make. Now, obviously, statues don't bleed. I did look this up, by the way, and this seems to be some temple legend. When such extraordinary claims are, uh, you hear them, uh, just look and see if this is something verified. This is something uh, that has some experimental or observational evidence behind it. But this just seem to, seems to be a temple legend and there's some story behind it. Just watch. But how do they find out about the goddess bleeding? Whenever the Pujari spots menstrual stains on the clothes of Devi, he takes it to the senior women of Talamon, madam. And once she confirms the menstruation, the four... I mean, if you have some obvious piece of evidence like the blood on the clothes, obviously you'd uh, send it for some forensic analysis or something. But uh, hey, forget the rationality we just want uh, the temple legend to flourish and people to come for this festival four day festival and yeah four day festival will begin for first three days the devi will be separated from shiva and kept in a different sanctum with two women helpers and the temple will be completely closed for outsiders let's look at the comments on this devi bleeds her and prove her a bunch of folks who are the only one to see the blood stain see this is why you should look you should look for verified observation this is clearly not a verified observation now they wouldn't lie would they especially when it's the only usp of that temple this is basically the idea just look for a rational reason i don't think we need to watch the rest of this video i just wanted to show you an example of a really improbable conclusion that someone has made and how you should actually conclude if you see uh, claims like this. Let's see another one. This is another such claim I found. Why is this 800 foot symbol found in South America described in the ancient verses of the Ramayana? This is going to change how we look at human history. So Griva, the king of the Vanaras orders a massive search operation for Sita. He sends his army in all the four cardinal directions. However, it's not merely across the Indian subcontinent, but the entirety of the whole goddamn world. Dispatching the group east Sugriva describes a vivid picture detailing the people they might encounter along with the mountains, lakes and fertile fields but here's where it gets truly intriguing. After they cross the Pacific into South America, atop a mountain peak they'll encounter a colossal golden pylon with three branches at its head. Wait, wait. So, the story so far is in the events of the Ramana after Sita gets kidnapped, uh, Sugriva's army goes in search for her in all four cardinal directions and they go all the way to South America by crossing the Atlantic Ocean. None of that is mentioned by the way and they find this. This is an actual symbol that's there in Peru. I looked this up but uh, what they seem to have concluded is this description in text of this symbol, a golden pylon resembling a palm tree with branches and heads 
established on the peak of a mountain. This could describe anything. It's not very specifically about this exact symbol, but concluding that this South American symbol is the same one that's being described in the Ramayana is an extraordinary claim to make. Okay, obviously this requires evidence, but this is written in Ramayana, which is a mythological text. So I'm not going to look at it with a lot of scrutiny, but think of what also should be true, but if this is true, there should have been a way for an entire army to cross the Atlantic Ocean and go to South America and see this. Obviously, that had to be ships, couldn't have been some uh, bridge or something. But obviously, if we had ships to carry an entire army to South America, obviously, Sri Lanka wouldn't have been a challenge, right? Let's look at the comments. Hold on. If they have ships to sail around the world, why didn't they just use them to Sri Lanka? Yeah, dude, just think about it rationally. Think about what else should have been true, given all this. There's some description of Antarctica and the South Bay. If armies went all the way there, they did that before they reached Sri Lanka? Seems a bit strange. See, just look at what else should have been true. Obviously, this is a mythological text. Not a lot of scrutiny that I'm gonna pay to this. But the people making these extraordinary conclusions are the ones who feel good when they hear this conclusion that the, their ancestors who wrote these texts performed all these feats, all these achievements. Let's look at the rest of this video. Eastward, Sugriva describes a vivid picture detailing the people they might encounter along with the mountains, lakes and fertile fields. But here's where it gets truly intriguing. After they cross the Pacific... In Obviously, this person, whoever it is, this creator is very good at making a video seem more amazing than what the facts being described are. But okay. Into South America, atop a mountain peak, they'll encounter a colossal golden pylon with three branches at its head. The locals have no knowledge of the geoglyph's origin or purpose. The Ramayan in the next verse says it was created by the gods to mark the eastward direction. Likewise, the description in the south goes all the way to Antarctica, characterizing it as a... And they didn't reach Sri Lanka before Antarctica landscape that is perpetually covered in darkness. To the north, he goes all the way to the celestial ballet of the Aurora Borealis. The Ramayan was based 14,000 years ago and at that time, Sugriva's knowledge of the world forces us to confront the Ramayan not just as an epic but also a historical... Now, you have related whatever is being described in the Ramayana to real world locations and then made this conclusion. Do, do you see where your error lies? Record that has the potential to rewrite the story of humanity. Yeah, okay. So that is the kind of stuff that you'll find in my subreddit. We'll discuss things where people make irrational conclusions. We'll comment on that. And if you wanna check out the subreddit, the link is down below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.